Welcome. You are listening to the Millionaire's Roundtable. I am your host, Lynn Richardson. This is WVON 1690 AM, the talk of Chicago, the voice of the nation, my favorite radio station. I'm so excited about uh, our topic that we have been discussing. And I think that this is something that we have to not only wrap our minds around, but we have to get a hold of it so that we can get to the next level. You know, this show is about creating millionaires, one family at a time, one day at a time, one dollar at a time, one dime at a time. And it is my belief that everybody can achieve a million dollar net worth. Everybody can take what they have and get to where they're trying to go. We just have to work together. We just have to uh, support each other. And more importantly, we have to get the knowledge and then put the knowledge into action. And so many times I see people have access to information, understand the information, and then fail to implement the information. And so that's what we are dealing with. We are dealing with the top 10 signs of a poor mentality. Once again, the top 10 signs of a poor mentality. And this topic is so important that I've dedicated three entire shows to it because I don't believe we have failed to achieve wealth Uh, and prosperity and the ability to pass on generational wealth because we're not intelligent enough. I don't think that's the reason. I don't think we have uh, a a limited supply of information. Uh, That may have been the case at one point in time, but it is certainly not the case today. I've been talking on the radio, around the world, in the streets, wherever they would let me speak. I've been doing it for about 20 years now. And I know we have not seen the kind of change that we believe in and the change, the kind of change that we can acquire. So I want to just go back and say a little bit uh, about uh, the the first six things. And then we're going to continue and finish on. First, let me just say this. The Bible says that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. Once again, we have not been given the spirit of fear, but we've been given the spirit of a pow- of power, of love, and of a sound mind. That means when we have information, then we use our power to implement it. We have love. That means everything that we get, the knowledge that we get, the resources that we get, that we use it for the purpose of expanding Uh, and growing and extending love to ourselves and to others. And then a sound mind. If we have anxiety, if we are nervous, if we are fearful, if we are angry, then we cannot use the abilities of our sound mind. The other thing that I'd like to say is that the Bible says that we will be blessed exceedingly and abundantly more than we can ever ask or imagine according to his power at work in us. See, the according to is the piece that gives us power and gives us control because it simply means that we will be blessed abundantly, but the according to means how are we going to act? How are we going to work? So I'm saying, I'm decreeing, and I'm declaring that the power is going to work because we are going to obliterate everything that is in our way. So the top 10 signs that we are operating from a poor mentality, I want to just go back through the list. Number one, caring what other people think about you. That's a terrible one. You got to forget what people think, especially poor people. (laughs) You know, rich people stay rich because they act poor. Poor people stay poor because they act rich. Poor people stay poor acting rich in front of other poor people, which is real crazy. I used to do it. I used to worry about what people were going to say, what they were going to think, and now I don't care. No is a complete sentence. And as a matter of fact, we're not keeping up with the Joneses because they're probably broke too. No offense to the Joneses out there. That's number one. Number two, blaming everybody else for your problems. You are in a position where life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you respond. Whatever comes your way, get up. My friend Les Brown says, doesn't matter what happens to you if they knock you down. If you can look up, you can get up. My friend Russell Simmons says, you can't fail until you quit. So we are not going to let the external forces of the world, people, what they say, what they do, and the darts that they throw at us to get us off of our square. Number three, seeing the negative side of everything. When something happens, something simple. You know, I can be guilty of that. I don't like being interrupted when I'm thinking. I don't like being interrupted when I'm working. So if I'm in the airport and I'm texting and someone comes and asks me a question, 
I get all flustered. You know, that's kind of crazy. The truth is, I'm supposed to be here to serve other people, and they don't know that I am involved in something. So I've got to set my mind right before I walk into a public place that I might be asked a question. And when I'm asked that question, I don't need to act like a fool when I answer it, right? So I have to see it from a positive perspective. I have to see things from the perspective of love and truth. Number four, the number four sign that we are operating from a, a, a poverty uh, a mindset is when we respond to unfamiliar information with a statement versus a question. Someone says everybody can be financially free and you say, no, it's not possible. That's a statement. Instead of saying, how can we make it possible? What can I do to be better? How many people can I help teach, preach, and so on? The number five uh, sign that you are operating from a poverty mindset or a poor mindset is engaging everybody's energy. Just because they said it doesn't mean you have to respond. Just because they're going doesn't mean you have to partake in it. Just because everybody else is doing something, silence is going to be a very good friend of yours during this process of breaking a poverty mindset. The number six thing is working for money instead of purpose. Working solely for money instead of purpose is a sign of a poverty mindset. If you just do it for money and you don't do it for passion, let me tell you something. You're going to be disappointed, disrupted, disgusted all the way down the line. You know my story that I started running Russell Simmons Company. I wasn't getting paid at first. The economy crashed. I kept going. Eventually, I got paid. What I didn't tell you previously is when it was time for me to uh, be assigned a salary, Dr. Benjamin Chavis sent me the spreadsheet and told me to write in my salary. And when I wrote it in there, he sent it back to me and called me and said, that's not enough. So when you work for a purpose that's bigger than money, then money begins to follow you, chase you down. Let me tell you, it will run you over. So don't work simply for purpose, simply for money. Make sure purpose is attached. And yes, we got to get our coins. We've got to be able to take care of ourselves. The number seven sign that you are operating from a poverty mindset is this. It's failure to take calculated risks. I know we are comfortable. We get in a comfort zone. As a matter of fact, when people tell me that they are in a comfort zone, the fact that you can say you're in a comfort zone actually means you're uncomfortable. Something there is not flowing. Something there is not working. But if you never take any calculated risks, if you never take a risk, if you never step out on faith, if you never believe in yourself enough to just see what's going to happen, then how do you know where you can go? I'd rather step out on faith, fail, <laughs> and start all over than to stay in the same place and wonder what could have happened. I'd rather do it. When I st first started helping people to buy homes, and, and home ownership is this great big dream, but then people would get afraid, and I'd say the worst thing that could happen is that you foreclose. And they'd look at me like, oh my God, I can't believe she said that. Yes, the worst thing that could happen is that you'll go into foreclosure. But nobody's going to come and chop off your big toe. Nobody's going to come and take your oldest child. Nobody's going to come and, and, get, and take a leg or an arm or a finger. The worst that will happen is that you'll go into foreclosure and you'll start all over. The worst thing that could happen if you start a business is it will fail. Nobody's going to come and chop your head off. So we've got to put these things in perspective. And I want you to get in the business of taking calculated risks. Now, that doesn't mean you just go run and jump and do anything. It means you surround yourself with a good team. The Bible says that plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors, they succeed. That's why I'm here. That's why Lens List is available to you. That's why attorney Deidre Wood Stokes and Serena Williams, and that's why real estate professionals Janea Kennedy and Monica Poland and mortgage professional Cecilia Marlowe and insurance professional uh, Tania Simmons. That's why they're all here. That's why Alicia Bowens is with us, helping investors and first-time home buyers. That's why we are here. That's why Ingrid Woolfolk is here, helping businesses start off and know their numbers. We are here to make your plans be successful. You're listening to the Millionaire's Roundtable. I am your host, Lynn Richardson. This is WVON 1690 AM, the talk of Chicago, the voice of the nation. We have to take a break for traffic and weather with Annette Flournoy. We'll be right back. WVON.
Do you know the difference between an estate plan and a will? Are you newly engaged and concerned about getting a prenuptial agreement? Are you married to your child's mother or father? And do you know what happens to insurance money if you are not? Call your wealth counselor, Attorney Deidre Woodstokes. With over 22 years of experience, Attorney Stokes has all the answers you need to help you secure your family's financial future. You can find Attorney Stokes on Lynn's List at www.lynnmillionaire.com. That's www.lynnmillionaire.com or call 888-LYNN-123. That's 888-596-6123. Protect your legacy now. Lynn Richardson, this is WBOM 1690 AM. The talk of Chicago, the voice of the nation. It's my favorite radio station. We are still creating millionaires, one family at a time, one day at a time, one dollar at a time, and one dime at a time. And that means you. You know, I've had the opportunity to talk to uh, and or connect with uh, somewhere around Three or 4,000 people uh, since I started this program, meaning three or 4,000 people have reached out to me and received a response, meaning they have the ability, they have the access, and they have the power to take the next step so that they can change their lives. So as you listen to this daily, Uh, weekly as you listen to the show live as you listen to the podcast and to the YouTube uh, postings I want you to understand that every time you hear something it's an opportunity for you to take another step every time you hear something a truth something that sits with you something that rings with you it's an opportunity for you to take a step what is that step that step could simply mean sending me an email That step could simply mean reaching out and going to my website, getting the book that you need to go to the next level. It could mean asking a question. It could mean sharing the information. It could mean posting it with someone uh, on your social media so someone else can gain the knowledge that you have. I'm quite pleased that so many of you have reached out to me and asked about the Master Coaches Training Program, the Master Financial Coaches Training Program because I can't do this alone. I'm not looking to do this alone. This is uh, an area uh, where you get the opportunity to not only help people, but yes, you can also earn income. So for everybody out there who's trying to find a home-based business, the more you get empowered with financial knowledge, the more you are in a position to help someone else. So I am looking for master financial coaches to join the training program. I have something that's coming up very, very soon because I want you to be in place for 2020, Wealth Vision 2020. I envisioned it 13 years ago that one day we'd get to the year 2020 and we'd have a clear vision for how we're gonna create wealth and generate uh, generational wealth for our families and this time is upon us now. So we are talking about uh, the top 10 signs Uh, that you may be operating uh, from a poverty and or a poor mindset. And number seven was failure to take risks. So I want you to get your journal right now and I want you to write 10 things that you want to do that you haven't done yet. I want you to write 10 things that you want to do that you haven't done yet. This is what I don't want you to do. I don't want you to think about how it's gonna happen. I don't want you to think about everybody who's failed. I don't want you to think about any of your failures. I don't want you to think about who you know and who you don't know. I don't want you to think about how much money you don't have, what you can't do, where you can't go. The rule and the instruction is simply this, to write down 10 things that you want to do that you haven't done. Write those things down. We're gonna talk about those things in a little bit, but the first thing that you have to do when you wanna take a risk is you gotta write it thoughts disentangle themselves when they pass through your fingertips. Let me repeat that. Thoughts disentangle themselves when they pass through your fingertips. And I want you to take a look at this list and then I want you to prioritize it. What's the first thing that you'd like to see happen? What's the second? What's the third? Maybe two things are in a tie. So I want you to write 10 things that you want to do that you haven't done. 
One of them can be, I want to be able to live from check to next week. <laughs> I'm tired of living from check to two o'clock. I'm tired of living from check to Monday. I want to have enough money to actually last to the next payday. I want to take a vacation. Uh, I want to uh, be able to plan for a trip to take my children or my grandchildren or my nieces and nephews to Disney World. I want to open a business. I want to go back to school. I want to heal the relationship with my mother or my father or my brother. I want to connect with a friend from 20 years ago. Whatever it is that you want to do, I'm telling you, you're going to have to take a calculated risk in order to get there. You're listening to the Millionaire's Roundtable, and I'd love for you to tell someone right now what it is that you want to do. So the first thing is I want you to write it. I want you to write 10 things that you want to do. The second thing I want you to do is to prioritize it. Just put a number one next to the first thing, put a number two next to the second thing, and then I want you to tell somebody at least one of those things. Tell somebody. Why? Because when you are taking calculated risks, not only do you need a team, but you also need accountability partners. You need people who are going to keep you motivated. Let me tell you something. You all think that I am miss, uh, you know, motivation and inspiration. I need people to keep me on track. I need people to remind me of who I am, why I'm here, what I'm supposed to do, and, and how I'm supposed to do it every day. <laughs> because sometimes I get tired too. I am no different from you. I get tired. I get weary. I get uh, distracted. Um, I, I, I start to have fear. And, and then immediately somebody will say something to me that will remind me of who I am, that will remind me of my goal, that will remind me of my purpose. But more importantly, someone who will remind me that I've had far more wins than I have losses. So to do a dissertation in life. I've got to learn something new. You've got to learn something new. You're listening to the Millionaire's Roundtable. I'm your host, Lynn Richardson. It's WVON, 1690 AM, the talk of Chicago. It's 1230, and we have a have to take a break for news, traffic, and weather with Annette Flournoy. Don't turn that dial. We'll be right back. Are you an exceptional real estate or financial services professional? Do you have a business or service that can improve the lives of others? You may qualify to serve the world as a member of Lynn's List. Visit www.lynnmillionaire.com. That's www.lynnmillionaire.com. Or call 888-LYNN-123, extension 5. That's 888-LYNN-123, extension 5, for more details. Back. You're listening to the Millionaire's Roundtable. I am your host, Lynn Richardson. It's WBON 1690 AM, the talk of Chicago, the voice of the nation, my favorite radio station. We are still creating millionaires, one family at a time, one day at a time, one dollar at a time, and one dime at a time. We are talking about the top 10 signs that you may be operating from a poverty mindset. And since we've had a, a, a kind of an extended break, I just want to review this list once again. Number one, the number one sign that you're operating from a poverty mindset is caring what other people think about you. Number two, blaming everybody else for your problems. Number three, seeing the negative side of every situation. Number four, responding to new or unfamiliar information with a statement rather than a question. A statement closes the door, a question opens the door. Number five, engaging everybody's energy, just yeah, dealing with everybody right. anywhere uh, all yeah. the time. That's a sign of a poverty mindset. Number six, working solely for money and not for purpose. Working solely for money and not for purpose. Number seven, failure to take calculated risks. That's a, definitely a sign of a poverty mindset. And number eight, here's number eight, being unwilling to learn anything new. Being unwilling to learn anything new. I'm working on my PhD. After I got the master's degree, I said I wasn't learning anything else. As a matter of fact, I told God, listen, I don't need to learn anything new. I've gotten all of the work I need. I've had enough trials and tribulations. I've learned for them. Let me just take these trials and these tribulations and just help the people. And that's it. Well, here's the goal. Here's the deal. That would be great if I don't want to do anything else. That would be great if I didn't want to grow. Not growing. It's scary because anything that stops growing starts to die. Let me repeat, anything that stops growing starts dying. 
You might say, it's all good, I'm in a comfort zone, but let me tell you something, the world is gonna just keep on moving on this conveyor belt and pass you by. So I certainly don't wanna be passed by, but bigger than that, I do not want to be outside of the purpose that I have been created for. I don't wanna be outside of the will. Uh, Melody Spann and I had a conversation and she said something that was so powerful. She said, I am going to live in his will, but I'm gonna do it his way. In my will, but his way. Once again, my will, God's way. So whatever it is that you wanna do, what you believe in, whatever you are thinking of, whatever you wanna to get to next, if it's simply a matter of not wanting to live from paycheck to two o'clock or living from check to next week, you wanna take a vacation, you wanna take a trip with your family, you wanna save $10,000. I remember one year having a goal to save $100,000 and I met that goal, but guess what? I had to learn some new things. I had to put some new things into practice. So that's definitely a sign that you're operating from a poverty mindset if you don't want to learn anything new. Here's another sign that you are uh, operating from a poverty mindset. Not trusting anyone, that's a big one. And let me tell you, that one is tough because everybody has been lied to, stolen from, cheated on, they stabbed you in the back, you thought they were your friend, you, you found out they were, they talking about you behind your back. Let me tell you something, some people love you and go talk about you behind your back anyway because they don't have anything else to do. Some people are gonna do things and it has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with them. Some people are walking around so miserable and so upset that the only way they can be unmiserable, the only way that they can have some peace is to put the focus and the attention, that negative energy on someone else. Because once the focus is off of them and onto somebody else, they can at least get some relief. So let me tell you something. Lil Mama's dad said this to me, and, and his name is True, and, and he is one of the wisest men. He's one of the greatest men I know, and, and I don't put a lot of men in that category. The, the, the people in that category are Barack Obama, Dr. Benjamin Chavis, my husband Demetrius, Pastor Howard Nichols, uh, you know, folks like that, Paul Stokes, I've got a list of them, Lewis Carr, um, and, and True. And he said this to me when I was first in the entertainment industry, and I was navigating through, and, and I was, I was, I came in bright eyed and bushy tailed, but I dealt with people in the industry who had been hurt. And so they wanted my help, but they didn't really trust. And they acted it out, and I felt it. And he said to someone who I've worked with for a while, he said, Listen, you can't trust nobody, but you got to trust somebody. So you might as well start with this. And it was the most brilliant thing. And I'm going to say it to you. You can't trust anybody, but you gotta trust somebody, so you might as well trust who you're standing in front of. Now, if you already know that they've done something wrong, if you already know that there's a tendency for something uh, uh, bad or disloyal or unethical or immoral to happen, I'm not saying trust that person, and I'm also saying you shouldn't forgive people who have done something wrong. If someone has done something wrong, forgive them. It takes the pressure off of you. They're not gonna get away with anything. They're gonna pay for that but it takes the pressure off of you. They don't control your energy and it doesn't mean that you have to put them back in the same position. So if someone hurts you, you can forgive them, but still let them stay over there. You can feed them with a long handled spoon. As a matter of fact, you don't have to feed them at all. Give them the spoon and let them go feed themselves. So forgiving is an important part of trusting. Forgiving and knowing that God has your back, forgiving and knowing that you can start all over again, it's a, it's a critical part of you getting to the next level financially. You can't get to the next level if you don't have people working for you, with you, on your team. And even when they mess up, you've got to trust and you've got to forgive. You cannot get to the next level if you don't trust anybody. Let me tell you why. The number one person who's going to be a problem if you trust nobody, is you. Because if you don't trust anybody, you're gonna behave that way. Your energy is gonna be uh, tainted. Your actions are gonna be tainted. Your thoughts are gonna be tainted. And let me tell you something, you can't get the best out of people if you are walking around crazy. You can't get the best out of people if you don't trust them. You can't get the best out of people. You can't help anybody grow. They can't even give you what you're expecting. If you don't trust them, you gotta trust people. 
And if you don't trust them, then get rid of them. You see, when we get to a place where we're trying to get to the next level, we want to have our cake and eat it too. You want the person that you've known for 20 years that you don't trust right there next to you, and then you're irritated every five minutes because you're too lazy, perhaps, to go and hire somebody new and train them. You're too stressed out. You don't want to do the work. Let me tell you something. On this path to getting to the next level, I don't care if it's getting your money straight. I don't care if it's starting your business. I don't care if it's growing your business. You must inspect what you expect. So when you ask somebody to do something and you're simply saying, I just trusted that you did it. No, you have to put systems in place. You have to put protocols in place. You have to ensure that not only are people doing what you've asked, but that your ask is an appropriate ask. You've got to make sure they have the capacity. One of the things that I've always done in management since I, and I've been managing people uh, twice my age uh, since I was in my early 20s. And I remember working at uh, the Office of Financial Aid at Moraine Valley Community College. And I had been in the industry for two years at that point. And I was managing people who had been in the industry five years, 10 years, 12 years. And what I knew early on is that I had a lot more knowledge than they did because they were working in a situation where they couldn't think for themselves. They were not allowed to make any decisions. Everything had to be approved and authorized. And so when I started working in the position, I ordered the free material from the Department of Education. I gave it to them and I told them to read it. And when they faced a problem, I wanted them to read the information and make a decision from there. And even if they made the wrong decision, as long as they could back up why they made their decision, then I would stand with them and support them and we just learn the lesson and go to the next level. Well, the person who I reported to didn't like that. And she called me into her office and she said, Lynn, listen, um, I don't want you doing that anymore. Uh, I don't want you getting information. You should ask me before you do anything like that. And I looked at her in her, now let me tell y'all something, I have grown a lot. I didn't have a whole lot of tact back then. But I looked at her and I said, listen, you hired me to be the assistant director. That means you hired me because of my leadership skills. As a matter of fact, I remember during the interview how impressed you were with my leadership skills and with my self-directed thinking. Let me help you understand this. I am never going to ask you if I have permission to order free information. I'm never going to do that. If you want somebody to ask you if they can go and get something that's free, that's going to help them, then you need to get somebody else because I'm not that person. Now, if it's something that has a price tag to it, I have to get approval for it, then I understand that. And so I didn't work there very long. <laughs> I got promoted. <laughs> one day, Dr. Jack Becker came to my office, tapped me on the shoulder, and I thought I was out of there. And they actually promoted me to start running a campus, but she and I just were not gonna work together. But what I'm saying to you is this, I trusted my team. My boss did not trust me because she didn't trust herself. So when you don't trust people, it's usually a sign that you don't trust yourself. So I want you to trust yourself. I want you to take responsibility. I want you to believe not only in others, but I want you to believe that you have the power, you have the will, you have the energy to make good decisions. And once you know someone isn't operating the way you'd like them to or the way you've discussed, then face it, deal with it. One of the things that I do in my company is I address things head on. I don't sit and marinate, let it and talk about it and tell 50,000 people. Now, I may use it as a learning tool and discuss it with the team. But if I've got an issue with anybody, I go straight to them and I deal with it. And I ask my team to do the same thing with me. You got to trust people. You're listening to the Millionaire's Roundtable. I am your host. Lynn Richardson, we are talking about the top 10 signs of a poverty mindset, the top 10 signs that you may be operating with a poor mindset. And I keep repeating this because I want you to get it if you're just tuning in. I don't want people to walk away from this and have to go get it all from all of them. I want you to listen to all of them so that you get the story and you get uh, the examples uh, so that you can apply it. But I'm just going to go down the list once again. Number one, caring what people think about you. Number two, blaming everybody else for your problems. Number three, seeing the negative side of everything that happens. Number four, responding to unfamiliar situations with a statement rather than a question. Number five, engaging everybody's energy. Number six, working solely for money instead of purpose. Number seven, 
failing to take calculated risks. Number eight, being unwilling to learn anything new. Number nine, not trusting anyone. And I'm going to tell you number 10 right after the break. We have to take a break for traffic and weather with Annette Fornoy. We'll be right back. W-V-O-N. Are you struggling with your finances? Have you tried everything you can think of but just can't seem to get ahead on your own? Well, it's time to get some help. With a financial coach, you can find out what you don't know and learn to make better choices when it comes to your finances. Lynn Richardson's Wealth Vision 2020 Financial Coaching provides step-by-step instructions daily, a one-stop shop to create your budget, access to vetted financial coaches in specialized areas such as mortgages, insurance, real estate, investing, taxes, and more. Lynn Richardson and her team will help you set goals, undo bad habits, push you past your own beliefs and gain peace with your finances go to www.lynnrichardson.com that's www.lynnrichardson.com or call 888-LYNN-123 that's 888-596-6123 for more info today Welcome back. You're listening to the Millionaire's Roundtable. I am your host, Lynn Richardson. This is WVON 1690 AM, the talk of Chicago, the voice of the nation, my favorite radio station. I am so excited. I just, I love this series. We've been talking about the top 10 uh, signs that you are operating with a poor mindset and or a poverty mindset. And uh, we have uh, wound down to the last thing. And this is the biggest thing. It is last, but it is certainly not least. And the truth is, it's the smallest thing. It's the easiest thing to get rid of, but it seems to have the most power over most of us who are not progressing, who are not prospering, who are not going to the next step. And the number 10 sign that you may be operating from a poverty mindset is fear. Now, I'm not saying that you should never experience fear we all experience fear but what do you do with that fear does the fear stop you if the fear stops you poverty is right around the corner if the fear stops you in your tracks then you might as well step right on into poverty you may as well step right on into depression you may as well step into shame pride you just you may as well quit because fear is false evidence appearing real It's not the truth. Fear is false. It's not true. Evidence, it looks like it's something, but it's really not. Appearing, it just appears that way, but it's not that real. It's false evidence appearing real. The Bible says God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. I remember reading in Exodus when the children of Israel thought they were on their way to the promised land and they had been uh, released from the Egyptians and they were about to cross the Red Sea and they turned around and they saw the Egyptians. Now they were on foot and they saw the Egyptians coming in their chariots and their horses with their weapons. And can you imagine the Red Sea is in front of you and the people who want to destroy you and enslave you and murder you and rape you and rob you of your promise. They are right behind you. Where are you going to go? The desert is on the left and on the right. The Red Sea is in front and the people who want to kill you are in back. But what did Moses say? Moses said, don't be afraid. (laughs) The enemy that you see, you will never see again. And guess what? God opened the Red Sea, parted the way and they walked through And when Pharaoh and his army tried to come in to see after him, it swallowed them up, washed them up. So what I'm saying to you is this. You need to keep going in the face of fear. You need to keep moving in the face of fear. When you walk through the door, you have no idea what door is behind that. I'm going to the airport. I have to get, I'm in the airport all the time. And one of the things that you have to realize about the airport, when you get out of the car and you're at curbside, You have to walk through a set of doors, but it's only after you walk through that first set of doors do you see another set of doors, and that second set of doors won't open until you walk through the first set. Fear is not going to make you wealthy. 
Fear is not going to make you healthy. Fear is not going to free your children. Fear is not going to increase your bank account. Fear is not going to grow your business. Fear is not going to help you. Fear will rob you. So the top 10 thing or the number 10 thing and the biggest thing, but it's really the smallest thing, the biggest sign that you are operating from a poverty mindset is that you're living in fear. I'm afraid to go buy a house. I'm afraid to get rid of these friends. I'm afraid to stop hanging with this group. I'm afraid to leave this job. I'm afraid to step out on faith. I'm afraid to invest in this new idea. I'm afraid to tell anybody. You know, there are people who are afraid to talk to anybody about their business plan because they're fearful that somebody's going to steal it. You cannot build Rome in a day and you certainly can't do it by yourself. So you've got to trust somebody. You've got to move past the fear in order to get to your promise. You're listening to the Millionaires Roundtable. I am your host, Lynn Richardson. We are creating millionaires one family at a time, one day at a time, one dollar at a time, and one dime at a time. And this is what I want you to do. I want you to get out of the poverty set, and I want you to do it right now. That list of things that you wrote, those 10 things that you want, if any of them have to do with me, I want you to stop right now and I want you to reach out. I want you to go to lynnrichardson.com, click connect with Lynn, ask Lynn, Lynn Richardson Live, whatever it is that you have to do. I want you to reach out to me. I want you to call my office at 888-LYNN-123. Leave a mobile number, leave a mobile number so that we can communicate with you quickly and efficiently because we're helping lots of